So, we're going to talk about the total market cap. Where is it going to go? Where can he take profit as well? Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. If you're new, make sure you have subscribed, hit that bell button and leave a like, it really does help. Now, we're going to talk about a very, very subjective thing. I'm getting a little bit annoyed with people talking about facts. It's all bollocks really, it's all subjective. Likewise with this indicator, likewise with this index essentially, right? It is an index that is everything. And I think personally, I use it, I look at it, but I also take it with a large chunk of salt when you start to see how many coins are actually on it. Now, this is where it's a bit contentious, right? We'll talk about it. We'll look on total market cap charts. We'll look at the coin market cap website. We'll look at all the stuff that this actually gives us a metric for, right? So let's talk about why it's subjective. If you don't know what subjective is, it's kind of an opinion, right? It's like it could be right or wrong. You know, it's like Elliott Wave theory. It's like, you know, what moving averages you want to use. If you like Fibonacci or not, everything in investing is subjective, but even more so, this index, this indicator is ridiculous, right? Because the reason why I say that is, be, you know, anyone can make a coin. I could very easily make a coin right now. I can go on the Ethereum network. I can maybe mint it via essentially Polygon. I can go on Avalanche. I can do all this sort of stuff, right? And make a coin. That will then have a supply. If that supply is then given a price by a demand, i.e. people can buy it using my name, my brand, I can go right buy this coin. Therefore, that has a value. Even if it's very, very small, it's still a value. We have now got registered right now 14,700 coins. 14,700 coins. It's a lot, right? They are all a part of that market capitalization. Now, when we go back in time, when we look at how many coins there was in, like, say, 2016, 2017, 2018, there's a lot less. So how high, realistically, that's a question, is that total market cap? How are we at $2.5 trillion because of divine right, because we deserve it? Or is it because now there's three times more coins, therefore it's inflated the price quite a lot? Shit coins are in this. I would love with my expertise to be able to make a standard for cryptocurrencies. I can't because that again is subjective. It would be nice to be able to have one where it does not include crap, scams, rug pulls, copy NFTs, which I've mentioned before, copy coins, which are basically, if you go into CoinMarketCap, if you put in Dogecoin, you're going to get 45 billion different results as well using the word Doge. It happens, right? So let's look at the charts, let's look at a few things and I'm going to teach you a little cheeky strategy on how you can take profit on this as well. So let's talk about it. Okay, so as you see here, top left, okay, 14,703 coins. It's quite a lot, right? 2.5 trillion, cool. Now, I'm going to give you a little bit of a pointer. If you can be bothered doing this, might be a bit boring though. If you go to like the historic time shots and go to like the start of the you know, this website, essentially, you can kind of see how many coins there is. There's seven, right? Back in the day. I remember them well. I don't. Um, but one thing that I will tell you, like, I think when you go a little bit further forward, I believe this is true. Oh, balls, bear with me. I don't think it has it anymore, but I, I thought it did. But it used to have, and it used to tell you what the bottom was, but it isn't. But you can basically work it out. If you want to go back and go to like the last page, if you want to, you can see how many coins have actually grow, grown the ecosystem over a period of time, right? Therefore, it's added to the overall. So what is it? Why is it important? It is everything. So when you're looking at total market cap here, it's this, right? So coin market cap is a website. They do it on market cap, not Base. It's the only thing that you can really use as a metric. You can't really utilize it as price. You can't utilize it as when they were released. You can't do it by volume. You can only do it via how much its perceived value is as market cap, which essentially is the price times by the circulating supply, or if you want to go fully dilute with the total supply, therefore it gives you that valuation. It's similar to what happens in the stock market, how many stocks and shares are out, how 
the price of them, what's available on the market would give you the overall valuation of a company, which is why Tesla is valued at such a price, which is why Apple, Google, Microsoft, you can get the picture, right? So with that, it's very subjective. Now, the one thing that we know that works, and we always do this, we go to Google Trends, we see, is the market a bit toppy? Well, you can argue here back in the uh, the previous little bullish cycle we had was May, Bitcoin was absolutely everywhere, right? And I want to talk about a video I'm going to do at the end of this week. I mentioned it on my Patreon recently. I want to talk about the world of advertising with Bitcoin cryptocurrency, right? It's kind of been on my radar a little bit with me being an F1 fan, but I want to talk about people's perception of investing. And that's what that video is going to be about. And you can see here, right? I don't think Bitcoin's done in terms of the rally. I think exposure of Bitcoin is a lot less than it used to be due to the fact of this altcoins people want altcoins right this is much higher was obviously you know top seas but even right now it's uh, you know in terms of relevance in terms of search or metrics and stuff it's much higher and even here you can see the topics like crack in 2015 uh jiba robin hood teva right all these are top things best altcoins to invest in everyone's you know not so much everyone but people want to get involved in it which is why this metric is very very important to understand when it's going up, when you should be investing, when you should be taking profit, which we will talk about in a second. But another thing to talk about as well is social metrics, right? By the way, this is my company, Learning Crypto. Black Friday sales now on, by the way, so make sure you check out. Premium membership, you get it really cheap. So you can see here, again, sentiment-based. Tweets died off, right? Look at the YouTube influencers. Look at the, the peaks. Ooh, I remember my channel there. Oh, it was a ghost town. No one wanted to talk to you. No one wanted to watch anything, as you can imagine. And again, same here. Look at the views. Boom. Dropped off like a cliff. Obviously, pick it up now. And again, finally, Google searches, right? You can see that this is all relevant because it's all about demand. And this indicator, this index, will tell you what is happening. This was the run. This was a drop-off, right? They all look the same because they all do the same thing. If people are throwing money at it, this is going to go up. If people are not throwing money at it, it's going to go down. Same with the search metrics, same with the YouTube traffic, same with everything, right? It's just one of those things. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Now, the, one of the strategies that I utilize and use is I use an EMA. This is, again, subjective. You can use whatever you want. I personally use a 21. I like Fibonacci numbers, right? The sequence is simple. Not everyone does it these ways, but a lot of YouTubers do it. You got the eight, you got the 13, you got the 21, you got the 34, you got the 55, and then I think you got the 89, which I don't see very often, but it sometimes does get used. Those for me, I like them. I like them a lot, but I only realistically use the 21. I, I like to use the EMA eight if I'm looking at stocks, because it's a lot slower in terms of that volatility, but realistic expectations the 21 i think in crypto is pretty banging but this is where it gets interesting i like to use a three-day chart mainly now you can see here how clear and concise the market movements are this is where you time your entries why the total market cap is fundamentally brilliant but again stupidly subjective you want to buy when the whole market bull market is going up 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 you don't want to buy it when it's going down now this is again subjective i don't like to buy the dip that keeps on dipping i like to wait for the trend to reverse not everyone does that if i was like right okay you know you can see a massive divergence on the rsi here right huge and it was going to come down obviously and also another trick is when you go too far away from that moving average it likes to snap back like a magnet that is important to know and we will look at future predictions of where this could go in terms of value numbers and stuff in a second. But the one thing I want to talk about is the fact that if you're not taking profit at these big old peaks where it's going a bit too far away, you should be because you would have been making a bit of money, especially if you've been in the market for a while. We're not talking small moves here. We're talking billions and billions going into the market, right? Now, again, let's talk about why I only invest at certain points. Now, even if you were to like say sell around here and it goes a bit higher, that's fine. There's RSI divergence all over the gaff. But 
when I see people buy here and just keep buying and buying, which I know it makes sense in some ways, but in crypto, it's a lot harder because you're never going to find a bottom and you can also dilute how much you're going to put in the market because you keep buying the dip that keeps on dipping. Wait for a trend to turn. When it starts going above that moving average again, start looking because either way, if you were selling up here or in around where this re region was or even here, you're still going to get it and much safer. The probability of buying something that is actually worth buying is much better in an overall market run. Now, I know this is not the asset that you're buying. This is just an index, right? But realistically, most of the market was going up because this is utilizing monetary value, USD value going into the market, which is kind of like why your USD go up, which is important, right? So when we start talking about profit taking, if you are not taking profit when things are like massively overextended, you should be, even if it's a little bit, because it does snap back and we've seen it again here, boom. We're in a world of pain right now. I mentioned it in my tweets not long ago. Influencers start to flap a little bit. I personally think it's fine. If you've seen some of my videos, you would have seen this level on there for ages. <sighs> Which is annoying. But hey, ho, people don't listen. Other charts to look at as well. The total two chart. This is everything. And again, look at that magical line. Excluding Bitcoin. So that is everything excluding Bitcoin. So this is basically your Ethereum and everything else, right? There's also another one called the total three. This is everything without Bitcoin and without Ethereum, right? So that's, you know, the two big caps gone. It still looks fine. We are still in an uptrend. We can take a lot of information from this. It's important. But let's look at the overall market cap. Because if we go to log scale, okay, go to the monthly time frame, because why not? Now, this is the question that I want to ask you. Okay. When you look at it this way, it looks fucking huge. Pardon for my French. But that's a reality, right? Everyone's saying to me, and I've tweeted about this as well this morning because people are getting on my tits. No one knows about crypto. What are you on about? Right. So if you've been in the market long enough, you'd know how far we dropped in 2020. A lot of people know about crypto, unfortunately, right? The, the days of being early in some things are not as easy as they used to be. Look at Bitcoin price, for example, right? To 100x from where I bought it, give you an idea, right? So what we what do we need to look at? Well, for me, let's look at the past. The previous alt run, as in the big bull market, to the bottom. I'm going to say this right now. We topped out right where we should have been. And you can see it. You can see it on the Fibonacci on the nose, right there. Well, give or take on the nose. Bear with me. Let me just put that right. Let me just make sure. There we go. It's yeah. So when we look at that, that is unbelievable. But I've also got that level there, which is kind of what I want to talk about. I don't think we're done yet. I genuinely don't think we're done yet. But we have to have a breather at this point because everything has hit resistance. Everything has went, uh, why? Look at Bitcoin. I did a video very, very similar to this. It hit the exact same bit on Bitcoin at roughly $69,000. It was about seventy, seventy-one thousand dollars where that line was. It literally turned around and went, no. Ironic number, I know, 69, but it's an important number. That's why we were corrected. Now, I'm not saying overnight it's going to do this, but that 2.272 is a very, very big number in crypto. It always seems to be a big number where you see cycle runs. Could we be going to 11.86, which is not too far fetched because one, we're going to get more and more coins. Two, the market's just going to probably increase with it, anyways, in terms of value of money, people coming in, um, adoption, etc. etc. Got to remember that is roughly around what gold's market cap is right now, and that is just one element, one metal that you can buy. The whole market cap of 14,000, which at that point, maybe if we get there, might be about 18 to 19,000 coins, maybe potentially, because the rate of coins that are coming out right now is ridiculous. You've got to look at the power chains with power, um, Polkadot, you've got to look at Avalanche, Solana, you've got to look at all these new ecosystems that are built. It's going to get very, very interesting. Now, that is where I feel we're going. I genuinely believe we are going to see that number at some point, but I don't know when. That is where the element is. So we've already hit base number one, base camp, right? We've turned around. Now, 
let's be objective and let's look at some other levels in a minute, right? I want to just put that up here. Apologies. I've shrunk it because I'm an idiot. Oopsie. Oh my god, hold on. Hold on. Come on. This is the worst thing about trading view, by the way. Sometimes it doesn't want to work for you. Or it does. Oh, it's because it's on ah. Because it's on a log scale. I'll just leave it. Anyways, that's important to know, right? But let's look at a few other levels, right? Let me just bear with me. Bear with. Just remember that area, roughly around there. So again, okay, let's talk about another situation that we've got here. We've got two situations, really. So we've got this COVID crash. We went to that level here and we pulled back, right? You can see that we pulled back very, very nicely into the 382, uh, 236, sorry, and then off we go. And again, that is saying 18 trillion, maybe a bit too far fetched, but this level is between halfway, give or take around halfway. That level could be of absolute interest because that could be the next level that we're going to, potentially. Would you be happy with that? I would be. I'd probably be selling out quite a bit of my assets if that's the case, if we're around there. I think, you know, three times my portfolio from here would be pretty magical. Um, yeah, goodbye, YouTube. Um, but yeah, that's my overall thoughts on it. But there's another one as well. The smaller move, where we are right now. So we've had this impulse. We have pulled back. Let's see where we do pull back. If we pull back even lower. And again, you can see here the confluence between even that level there around 5 trillion. So there's loads of levels where we could be pulling back into this region here. And we are very, very close to that turning point, potentially. Who knows? On the lower time frame. So if we go to the weekly, you'll see this. There you go. So if I look at that. If I just zoom out a little bit, you can kind of see it. We've had the impulse and we pulled back. Cool. So there we go. That is essentially some basic analysis where we could be going. Now, bit of a disclaimer. We may not do it. Okay. If if the if the markets don't want to do it, it might not do it. <laughs> it's just the way it is. But realistically, we've got to think adoption. Not everyone wants to invest, but there will be a lot of people, and I've mentioned this before that will utilize cryptocurrency technology, but not be an investor. That's companies, utilizing companies and using companies for the gain of, you know, basically better tech, faster transactions, more secure, the ability to do different things versus traditional systems, right? That is kind of the phase we're into. Now, not everyone will become an investor, but it's good to know that some of the technology that is being developed right now is freaking brilliant. So there we go. If it doesn't happen, just going to put this point out there right now. Let's just talk about, I don't know, hmm, where do we go from? If we go from the COVID crash to where we are right now, and let's just say that we do completely fail and it goes absolute tits up, where would you like to invest? Would you like to wait for potentially going all the way back down there? Because it, it could happen, you just don't know. So yeah, they're my overall thoughts, boys and girls. Make sure... You have watched the video that is about to pop up in a second. That is going to help you massively as well with profits. Not to mention what you just wished to see. Ciao, ciao.